Watching this new video is insane. I cannot believe after watching this a couple times that everybody survived. This truly is a miracle. Let's get right into this video. I did a video two days ago. It did very well. I had almost five, 6,000 comments. So I'm going to recap and uh, talk about some of your criticisms that you had about me. We're going to review this new video and show you what it shows. And it definitely with this better angle, we have a much better idea of what happened than when I did this video two days ago. We're going to review the CRJ, the landing gear and the wings. And I'm going to show you some stuff that you really wouldn't see anywhere else just from somebody that's type rated in the airplane. I'm going to give you my experience. Then we're going to do an interview with Stig Aviation. He is an amazing mechanic. He is some of the best content out there when it comes to information. I was able to talk with him on the phone earlier, so we're going to play that into our interview. And then I'm going to look over it one more time. I think this snow saved lives. And uh, as last time, I asked to like and subscribe. That clearly worked. So thank you very much. So I might as well ask again. I would be remiss. I need to run my intro. Fat Man Scoop passed away a couple months ago, but he did an intro for me. So I don't know why I'm not using it. It's a perfect opportunity. So let's roll that intro and let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take off with Gary B. Pilot. Let's go. Okay, let's get started with this video. Much clearer than yesterday. I don't know what video that was, if it was from 1984 or some old security camera footage, but let's take a look in here. So somebody's clearly filming holding short of 2-3. And as the plane comes in, boom. All right, let's stop it right there and let's go back here again. Okay, everything up until this point is normal. This just looks, every. some people said, oh, the plane was going fast. I can't not tell from that situation. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but it looks normal to me. The only difference right here is it looks like the airplane simply did not flare. And right here, boom, the right wheel touches down, the right main touches down first. And as you can watch now, remember this when I get into this uh, data a little bit more. Boom, gear collapse, the wing looks like it catches the snow, and then suddenly the plane flips over, and we'll talk about that in a second. It looks like the snow extinguished uh, the, the flames. So let's go back here a little bit and let's talk about at the CRJ 900 versus the Airbus 20, uh, 320 wing, for example. So now ignore that tail that that was actually not the RJ's fault. It was a, I think it was a 350 was passing by and took off the tail. But what I want you to focus on here is look at the, the two men standing there at the RJ wing. Look how close that wing is to the ground. Now compare that to your right on the Airbus where you could be standing as long as the engine doesn't hit you, if you were further to the left there, you could be standing underneath the plane, the wing would just go right over the top of you. In fact, I could put somebody on my shoulders and they still wouldn't touch the top of the wings. So the point I'm getting at is this is a CRJ 900, but look how close those wings are. So there wasn't much room for that wing to sit down and grab. Once that gear collapsed, the wing was just so close to the ground that it was able to rip off and you know maybe it hit a snowbank or something. But the fact that it ripped off, I mean, that's why everybody was saying, how did this how did this wing just rip off and how did the plane flip over? I you know, was watching that video and I go, how in the world does that wing rip off and it flip over like that? But then there's no huge fire damage that I can see. And we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So let's talk about a stable approach coming in here. This is the only, this is the, on the left side here is called the PFD. That's the primary flight display. And that's a lot of info there that's, you know, the uh, middle right is your altitude. But what I want you to focus on is the bottom right, where it's the green 1.2 and then the white writing. That is what's known as the VSI, vertical speed indicator. That tells you your rate per minute, whether you're climbing or descending. Now, for the purpose of this video, I was unable to find an example of an RJ VSI that was descending. What I'm getting at here is you look at the picture on the right, Landing on one of the mains, the one main or the other first is not uncommon. It's not uncommon at all, actually, especially if you're like landing into a crosswind, you're going to put the main down, get it on the ground and then drop it. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But what I want you to keep an eye on is that VSI, that 1.2, right? Now, normally when you're coming in, that's going to be about 700 feet or so. Now, this is how a normal landing should go, okay? And, and I put the CRJ 900 and how the landing gear works, but the, the normal landing, these first three lines here is pretty much goes for pretty much any airplane, right? Any commercial aircraft that is. I'm not going to talk about fighter jets or anything like that. Now, a normal landing, you're going to, so as I mentioned, as you're coming in to land, if you're about anywhere from 600 to 700 feet, 
per minute is you're going to be your descent rate at about 1,000 feet, 500, all the way down to the runway. That's going to give you your normal glide. Now, what will happen is in that transition, and in the CRJ, it's about 50 feet. What happens is you'll start bringing the power back. You'll start picking the nose up. You'll pull the power back. And by about 30 to 20 feet, your power will be at idle. And then that's called the flare. And you flare and you, you slow that rate of descent. So if you're hitting a nice landing anywhere from 100 to 300, right? A firm landing is going to be about 500 to 600. A hard landing is considered anything above 600. If the descent rate exceeds the oleo, it's always such a funny name, the oleo strut can absorb, the strut bottoms out, meaning it reaches its mechanical limit and it no longer absorbs energy. So I think that's what we saw in the video, the strut and the pressure, it's got hydraulic pressure and I think something else, a nitrogen, I believe. And as it absorbed, the, the gear just gave, that's all the pressure give and it just snapped. Now, let's move on to this. Why that's surprising. I have, hard landings are not like a unusual thing. Now that looked pretty hard. It looked like there was almost zero flare, but I am shocked that the gear collapsed out from underneath it. I've heard of airplanes touching down at 1200 feet a minute. I don't really think it was that much higher, but it's designed to handle that. And so if I was going to take a guess and say it was six or 700 feet a minute, the landing gear, I think, could have held up. It, although it would have required an, uh, an inspection. Now you do have to, we'll, Stig will talk about this in a second, but when you do have a hard landing, it has to go through an inspection. But the fact that it was a full collapse means it could have exceeded the full CG at 2.5 to 3 Gs at impact. I don't think that happened. It's my opinion that this was a perfect mix of possibly, now again, just my opinion, we need more data to see, but I think there may have been a failure or some type of, failure on the, the landing gear mixed with a hard landing that just all happened at the right time that it just caught that right main and, and it just happened to collapse. That's what I'm leaning towards because I have a hard time believing that that thing just caught down on a hard landing and completely, like I'm surprised it didn't bounce. Typically that's, you can have a bounce landing as well. So I, I don't know, but that's going to be more of the data that we're going to that we're going to see. Let's go back here to the first one. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about some of the comments. A lot of people thought it was unfair to criticize people that were filming or taking their bags out. I disagree. Look, I'm not saying I'm going to pass, a, you need to pass a law and say that it needs to be illegal. It's the same way I would say, do you have the right to go around to every single person every day and say F you? Well, yeah, should you? Probably not. Okay. What I'm getting at here is, I personally think that you should not be filming, should not be grabbing your bags. Let's not forget on the, the, the flight that came in from Asia. Was it Asiana Air that crashed in San Francisco? It crashed. People started evacuating. Let's not forget that people survived. I don't know if it was more than one person, but it was at least one person that survived that crash. They walked off the plane. I don't know if they were filming. I don't know. We don't have video of it, but got hit by a fire truck and killed. Okay, you're out here on the runway evacuating at the airport. Even if you don't want to do it for other people, my point is at least, at least do it for yourself and keep your head on a swivel because there's going to be fire trucks showing up. You do not want to be looking down at your phone on in a situation like that. Um, you know, another thing, people, somebody said, oh, why did you use the, the video then if it was so, so bad? Well, you know, if you have evidence in court, you're going to, Know it, even though you don't agree with it, you're going to show the evidence so that you can be like, hey, let's all learn something from this. Now, back to this note, a lot of people knew, I did not know Mary Schiavo was the former general inspector for the Department of Transportation. However, I did not specify because the quote I had was once pilots pass a certain point, they must continue. But she was talking about an approach. Now, I tried to find the video, I couldn't go and find it. But from what I saw, that was what she said. She was talking about approach. I obviously know there's point of no return. Like, you know, obviously, if you, you know, on takeoff, there's a point where you have to continue the takeoff. Obviously, if you land and taxi the gate, yeah, then you're not going around at that point, which is, you know, I thought that was, I thought that was kind of obvious. Um, before we run the interview with Stig, let's look at this one more time. Let's look at this video. And I want to show you 
how I think the snow saved uh, all these people. I think the snow saved, I, you know, again, this is just my opinion on things, but I believe I've seen so many of these crashes when a fire starts. A lot of people said here, let's, let's play it a little bit more. A lot of people said here, oh, well, the, the wing ripped off and the fuel dumped out and that's why the plane didn't catch on fire. Okay, what about the other wing? How do you know that for sure? Between those wings, how do you think those engines get fuel? Where do you think it goes? Do you think it magically teleports back there? No, there's lines that run into the plane and all the way back. It is my opinion that this, the re, that this snow saved this whole plane from going up in flames and going from, and this made the difference between a fatal accident and a non-fatal accident. Now, watch this again right here. The fire starts. Sure, some of the fuel gets ripped out, but look at that. The, the plane is still clearly on fire the whole way here. The other wing now is on the other side. The plane, do you notice the fire isn't stopping here? Do you notice that the fire is continuing to move with the plane that whole time? Now, only here, when it slides right off the runway where you see the snow start to shoot up, look at that. All of a sudden, the smoke starts to dissipate, change color, then all of a sudden the, it goes black, and then the black turns to a gray, and then a gray eventually turns to uh, white. I, y people said, you, need a, you don't have a technical analysis to make this call. Do you, if you dumped sand on a campfire or snow for that matter, I mean, all you have to really do is starve it. Maybe it wasn't even the snow. Maybe it's just because it starved it of oxygen. Like, you know, everybody, you know, you learn that in third grade. If you starve a fire with oxygen. But I truly believe here that this was saved. I think that whole plane would have went up and maybe possibly exploded more. And I definitely think that could have been a way different outcome. So... Thankfully, uh, the, the snow was there and it happened that at the time of year it did. Apparently, uh, like some of the comments I was getting on Instagram was people were saying that they got more snow the past three days than they had all year. So I guess it like worked out at a great time. But either way, watching this video to me is insane. As, as you come in, it's yeah, just no flare straight down, but boom, boom, snap, snap, wings off, flips over on fire, slides off the runway, Boom, snow puts it out. Now, don't get me wrong. The fire crew and everybody else was there on time. But, I mean, if the whole thing went up in flames, is it, what would that outcome be? We don't know. I'm going to close this out with an uh, interview with Stig. Stig, you got to make sure to go follow him on YouTube. Stig provides some of the best info out there. And, uh, you know, he, 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 we talked about this a little bit, and I think he has great insight. So don't forget to follow him on YouTube. I will link it in there. I'm going to end the video like this. And I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, stay safe. All right, Stig. So the main thing I wanted to know was, let me know, can you tell me a little bit about the overweight landing inspection and just like just a general overview? And then I had a couple questions about it. The inspection is uh, quite extensive because now we're starting to uh, look at G loads of how much G that the aircraft experienced upon landing. Uh, since the flaps are deployed, landing gear, all these components are, you know, extended, a heavy G load is going to have a side effect because all these things are either on some kind of a flat track transmission, linkages, all between. So all of that needs to be inspected. Struts have to be inspected. Flaps need to be ins inspected. That means all these things need to get deployed when we are doing this. Do you guys ever, do you look at data for at uh, like feet per minute when you're touching down, like at what rate the aircraft touched down at? Uh, we can. We have that capability of looking at the, the rate of descent, but majority of that information we will debrief the pilot from. Uh, but we can gather that data because we have the capability of downloading the DFDR or the, or the FDR, the flight data recorder, basically. We can download that information and analyze it. And I always see, I always wondered because what's, you know, an overweight landing can be very, in my opinion, I, I don't want to say arbitrary, but they come up with a number, right? So let's say they come up with a number and it's a thousand pounds over, but you grease the landing and you touch down at a hundred feet a minute versus let's say you're a thousand pounds under, but you touch down at 600 feet per minute. You know, I've always wondered if that, like, you know what I mean? Like what's structurally more damaging or hurting? Uh, honestly, it's, it's whatever the G load tells us. If you exceed the G load, no matter what, that's when the airplane becomes a tattletale and, and say you exceeded the G load. Now, if let's say if you are landing overweight, but you butter that landing and you came in nice and smooth, 
even if you're over, let's say a couple of thousand pounds overweight, the G loads is what's going to determine the factor of if that aircraft needs that heavy, heavy inspection or not. Okay. So you, that answers my question. So that is somewhat of a factor. So it's off, it's not necessarily based on feet per minute, but it is total G load is that's going to be yes. the most determining factor. Okay. Cause that makes yes. sense. What doesn't make sense to me. And I don't know, this is a little bit of speculation, but when you watch that new video of that plane coming in, you know, when we're about 500 feet, we have a call. We say 500 stable target. And then you say the rate of the descent. And typically it's almost always 700. Sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's six. From what I can mm -hmm. tell that plane did not look like it flared, but I, so I understand it could be a hard landing, but what I didn't understand is that 700 feet per minute, I I've seen planes that I don't know if you've looked at this on hard landings, but I've heard of even up to 1200, 1300 feet a minute. So what I'm confused at is a plane that probably didn't have a lot of fuel on, shouldn't have been that heavy. How did that gear just completely come up and collapse from out underneath it? Even if it did touch down at 700 feet a minute. This is a really interesting thing you bring up because I recently just spoke to another pilot uh, earlier and um, he has experience. He fl he's flown T-tails and I think you have too, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I flew 10 years yeah. in the CRJ. Yeah. So you know it very well. Their rate of descent was, uh, I think, almost a thousand feet per minute, wasn't it? I don't have that data yet, but just from looking, it looked very, you know, like a normal thing. It just looked like it didn't flare. That was the only difference to me. Not to say that I'd be able to identify between just eyeballing 700 and a thousand, you know, that's only 300 feet difference. I don't think right. I could tell, but even so I've heard of planes touching down way above a thousand, but what's odd is to me in that video, it just, everything looks normal. And then just all of a sudden there's just no flare, no transition, just boom. But right there is that difference where I'm still shocked that that gear would completely come out underneath it and be ripped out. I mean, I was under the impression that those things are tested up to like 2000 feet a minute or, you know, way more, you know, intense for that because I, I've heard of hard I mean, landings going higher than RJs that. are rjs are those things are excuse me crjs are extremely tough airplanes for i mean you know this yeah and uh yeah it's it was odd to me that even coming down that hard it ripped the gear off and then went into the roll i suppose if whatever you want to call it there yeah which was a, yeah. a miracle i don't even understand that it just looks like the whole gear just collapsed up into the plane but somehow that 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 gear didn't go up into the plane and hurt passengers and then the wing ripped off perfectly and then the there the fact that everybody survived is just is beyond it's a miracle a, i that's i thank god for that i saw that i was like oh please please i uh, hope everybody's okay and by some miracle everybody walked off that airplane yeah well that's great well i appreciate your insight is there anything else you'd like to add or anything like any kind of from a maintenance standpoint like what you've seen or anything that you think could be interesting i think i think everything pretty much the aircraft did what it can do in such uh, heavy load circumstances, uh, having obviously, if it's touching down at that severe G load or that rate of descent, maybe it was more, we, we will find out obviously when the, the FDR and the CDR, all the information comes out, but there are breaking points or shear points to aircraft like that. Any aircraft to be, to be honest with you, you push enough load. There are fail points where it's going to fail in a particular manner to try to either save the rest of the aircraft and uh you know in this case the gear ripped off that means it was designed to just break away at that point of contact or that much of a g load wings as well i mean they're going to rip off a, a certain point or another but that's you're talking now a impact with the ground and the airplane doing what it's not designed to do obviously hitting the ground right but overall yeah it's a uh, airplane actually withstood incredible amount of force and i personally am just not watching it surprised how the fuselage stayed intact and that's just an engineering marvel from yeah. a maintenance perspective absolutely i sent out a tweet and i said may your next relationship be as strong as delta seatbelts so Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's a miracle that uh, everyone survived. But, um, you know, everybody go follow Stig on his channel, man. He's got some of the best content. There's, I, I don't know of another channel out there that gets you the information more than you need. So thank you uh, so much. I appreciate that, Gary. And uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, speak.